Welcome everybody. We have another really interesting video to bring you today. Today we are lucky enough to be speaking with Andrea Paulson of IQ Renew. In March this year we were actually going to be holding an industry breakfast where IQ Renew was going to come down and speak to all of our members but unfortunately due to COVID-19 we had to postpone that event but thankfully Andrea has volunteered her time this morning to go through quite a number of questions that we have for her so welcome Andrea. Thank you so much for your time this morning. No problem. Thanks, Bianca. Good to be here. Oh, we're, we're, we're thrilled to have you guys. So um, just before we get into the long list of questions that I have, would you please be able to give an overview of what your role is at IQ Renew um, and what IQ Renew does? Sure. Um, well, my role at IQ Renew is I'm the Marketing Communications Manager. Uh, so IQ Renew, uh, we are a, a recycling company. We mm -hmm. don't collect bins, we process the resources collected from the recycling bin. Um, and our focus is really on innovative solutions to um, recovered resources with a particular focus on plastic and glass. Uh, we are the only company uh, in Australia, potentially the world, to combine physical and chemical recycling of plastic. So our Australian commercial partner, Lysella, mm -hmm. have the, um, may have, some may have heard of the CAT HTR technology, which is a solution which takes end of life plastic and chemically recycles that plastic back to the oil and chemicals it came from. Mm -hmm. And then that oil can be used to make new plastics, fuels and chemicals. Uh, we collect, uh, we don't collect the bins, so as I say, we process the recoverables from the from the recycling bins. Mm. Uh, we also have a, a large glass processing plant. Uh, we're based on the Central Coast and we process the recyclables for a number of large councils north of Sydney and Central Coast. The so Central Coast Council, Newcastle, Karingai, Willoughby Mossman. Uh, I've probably left one out there, but uh, yes, a number of large councils. So we um, have a lot of plastic, aluminium, steel, paper, uh, glass that is processed and um, then we obviously we're looking at finding the highest value uh, end markets for those recovered resources. Fantastic. No, thank you. Um, my next question was really going to be talking about an overview of, of what IQ Renew does. Um, but could you also, I suppose you've already covered that, but a little bit more, would you like to expand on that, but also mention on why that work is so important? Yeah, sure. So I think the reason that the work is so important that we're doing and why we focus really on innovative solutions is the market in Australia for recycling and recovered goods um, is uh, something that we need to continue to build upon. So prior to the China sword, the, um, the banning of sending recycling overseas, most of Australia's recycling plastic, um, paper, um, glass got sent to China. Um, mm -hmm. And then at the beginning of 2018, the Chinese government banned that, said, you know, we need to deal with our own recycling and our own waste. So mm -hmm. the waste export ban came in and all of a sudden, um, the materials that we were sending offshore and getting money for didn't have a home and we didn't have the facilities here to process them. So a lot of materials were going to landfill or stockpiling. Mm. So um, we've always had a focus on local recycling and what we're trying to do is increase our capacity to process plastic and glass locally mm. so that that material doesn't go to landfill so that because you know resources we don't we don't like the word waste um we're not a waste company we don't deal with waste we deal with resources so mm. and those resources have a value and i think there's a big push at the moment um you know with the rewriting of the national waste policy the export bans which are coming in this year which are banning the export of a lot of different um waste streams uh, that we need to locally build solutions to deal with our own recovered resources so that we can extract value from them and mm. reduce those resources going to landfill. Mm, thank you. That's incre incredibly important work and really exciting, actually. Um, my next question was actually going to be um, what waste streams, but I, I suppose I'll say that resource streams or food yeah. streams, <laughs> um, right. um, are best suited to the CAT HDR process that you do? 
Sure. So the CAT-HDR process is a, it's a chemical process. It's um, hydrothermal liquefaction. So CAT-HDR stands for catalytic hydrothermal reactor. Mm -hmm. So initially the technology was developed for biomass. So um, for biomass waste and residues. So things like, um, you know, when you're sh harvesting sugarcane, mm -hmm. uh, the tops and the bottoms are trash streams. So they often get burned. So it's looking at ways that you can use biomass residues, agricultural residues, so non-edible biomass, and produce a renewable bio crude. So that would be a direct substitute for fossil oil. It could be mm. used to make fuels and chemicals, anything that's made from fossil oil, essentially. So the platform, it basically takes the biomass and breaks the carbon, carbon bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, cut a long story short, mm -hmm. takes polymers, cuts them up, rearranges them, and it creates that oil, that bio crude oil. So around uh, probably a few years ago now, the um, Lysella, who developed the technology, essentially saw that the market was changing and saw that there's this huge new issue, which was plastic, and the world was mm. trying to come up with ways to manage plastic. So traditionally, particularly in Australia, we're only able to recycle um, a limited amount of plastic. Mm -hmm. So type one plastic, which would be like your um, PET water bottles, mm -hmm. and type two plastic, your cloudy uh, milk bottles, HDPE. Everything else is termed end of life plastic, and that's reflected in the data that um, we've seen where they've looked back and seen that you know, almost 85%, 87% of all plastic ever produced has ended up in landfill. Right. So we've been using plastic, even though it's an important um, material for manufacturing, for food, for health. Uh, we need to manage it better. So the problem with plastic is not so much that plastic itself is bad, it's that and throw it away. Mm. So we basically with the CAT HTR, we found that because plastic is made from fossil oil, it has those same chemical building blocks as wood and biomass. So the same technology that works on biomass works on plastic. So, mm -hmm. and plastic is already a refined feedstock. So mm -hmm. it's already gone through that refining from having the initial oil to create the polymers and the chemicals for the plastic. So it actually creates a really high quality oil and for every ton of plastic we put in we get out of between 800 and 850 kilograms of oil. So we get about 85% yield of oil. Amazing. Now we use, we specifically target end of life plastic which means all of those other types of plastic which currently go to landfill or incineration and essentially in Australia that's 80 percent of all plastic so if it's not a PET clear water bottle or soft drink bottle and it's not a uh, HDPE milk bottle then it's end of life plastic and it's not going to be recycled here in Australia mm -hmm. and we know that we can't export it anymore so that's really where uh, we are focused and because it works on a chemical level and it's breaking the plastic down to the oil it came from, doesn't really matter what kind of plastic it is. Mm. It doesn't matter if the plastic is coloured, if it's soft plastic, is, if it's a yogurt pot tray. I think I've got some types of plastic examples. So, yeah. so this si sort of plastic, the plastic milk bottles, that's what we would physically recycle. Mm -hmm. Physical recycling means taking that plastic and chopping it up, mm -hmm. melting it and making more of more products, but from the same type of plastic. So mm -hmm. an HDPE milk bottle would go into another HDPE bottle or container. Same thing mm -hmm. with PET. With chemical recycling, what we can do is we can take all those other types of plastics that can't be physically recycled. So plastic bags. So even though we've now got a ban in a lot of states on plastic bags, we're still using plastic film, plastic wrapping, plastic packets for particularly all post-consumer plastic. Mm. Um, so, you know, your confectionery, uh, lots of single-use plastic packaging, all of this can go through the CAT HDR to be chemically recycled back into oil. Brilliant. We can also process a mix of plastics. We don't need to sort plastic into different streams, which also um, is a big benefit in terms of the efficiency and economics of the process, because we can get 
plastic rejects like this from our material recovery facilities mm. and put them straight into the CAT HDR platform without sorting them or having to go, um, go through and do any sort of pre-preparation. Because mm. um, a lot of people, you know, you do see the recycling codes on plastic packaging. So you can yeah. see this one I found. I was just rummaging through my recycling bin yeah. this morning <laughs> like a crazy person. Uh, but this is so, you can see here, number five, PP, mm -hmm. that stands for polypropylene. Mm -hmm. So even though it does have this recycling code on, it's a bit confusing from a consumer perspective because it's not actually, yes, it is recyclable, but do we have the facilities in Australia to recycle it? And the mm. answer, unfortunately, is no. Mm. So this is end of life plastic. So all polypropylene would be going to landfill or incineration in Australia. But with, with the CAT HDR technology, we can chemically recycle that back to oil mixed with, so even this, you know, fancy hand wash, which is very fashionable right now, this is type one <laughs> PET, mm -hmm. but that's not recyclable because it's coloured. So right. I can only, if I chop that up, I'm going to get coloured PET flakes. Yes. Whereas what people want when they're doing recycled PET products is clear PET flakes, you generally. Mm. So this is end of life. This is end of life. These are end of life. All of this stuff is going to landfill. Like it's, mm. it's a bit sobering when you actually look at the amount of plastic that you, and consumers put these in their recycling bin thinking they're doing the right thing. Exactly. And they are. We don't want to stop them from doing that. Mm. What we need to do is fix the broken system in the back end. We don't want to say to consumers, none of this is recyclable, so don't put it in your recycling bin. What we want to say at IQ Renew is keep putting this in your recycling bin we are fixing the recycling system so that all of this can be recycled. Mm. And that's what the, that, that's really the big difference of bringing chemical recycling alongside physical recycling, mm. the two of them together. That's when we can recover a huge amount of plastic. Yeah, amazing. Thank you for that. Um, it was great for you to have those samples there because I was just thinking about what's in my recycling downstairs <laughs> as well. Yeah. And, I, and I've got that exact same hand wash and I was like, oh no, it's in that black bottle. And... Oh, I know, I know, I know it's, I know it's bad, but I do love that hand wash. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, you know, we don't want to stop consumers buying mm. certain products or putting things in their recycling bin. It's around the technology to recover and recycle these products is there. Mm. It's just investing in our local system to do it, to bring Definitely. those products, to bring those um, services and that technology online. Yeah, so, you know, definitely. that's all the kind of fun stuff we do behind the scenes. Oh, it's amazing, <laughs> amazing. Oh, it's so, it's so great to hear that you guys are working on this. Um, my next question was, um, and you did touch about local councils before but um do you at the moment so uh, my question was do you plan to run any plants in conjunction with a local council to handle the waste plastic stream because obviously waste is such a huge cost and a huge yeah. concern for our local councils and i know you mentioned some of the councils that you're already working with but would you be able to expand on on that a little bit further yeah, so IQ Renew, I guess our um, point of difference is being able to offer those innovative recycling solutions to both plastic and glass. And we certainly do work with our councils to um, look at, okay, what, what do we have um, in terms of facilities and technology? How can we continue to add value? But also from a council perspective, as you say, if we can reduce their landfill costs by recovering more, then obviously that's a big benefit. At the same time, for things like glass, where we don't have, we, we have a big glass recovery facility on the central coast in Wyong. Mm -hmm. um, that facility, once it's fully commissioned, um, so at the moment it processes around 25% of New South Wales glass. Mm. Um, once fully commissioned, it will be in a position to be able to do around 50% of glass. So obviously, mm -hmm. in terms of the local councils in that area, that will be available to those local councils. I think um, there certainly is the opportunity to work with other councils to bring online those technologies. Again, it's all about um, co-investment between state, federal government, industry, um, councils to build those solutions. So mm. yeah, it's around, um, we certainly do have those facilities. So particularly at the moment in um, Northern New South Wales, in Sydney and on the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there's a huge opportunity as well to do something similar in the Illawarra. It's all about volumes of material. Mm. So mm. for example, with the glass crush facility where we make, so we take the glass 
from, that comes from the material recovery facilities from recy recycling bins mm -hmm. and we crush and wash that into an engineered glass sand product so that glass sand product can be used as a substitute for natural sand so essentially glass is 100 percent recyclable mm -hmm. and the what we produce is a hundred percent substitute for natural sand so it can be used in things like construction roads footpaths um sand blasting medium filtration medium it's suitable for a huge range of applications but again it's it's you know that kind of having to establish those facilities we need the volume of glass to be able to get the return on investment so mm -hmm. i think um i was just speaking to graham who's our um chief operating officer earlier and he said you know, to get a glass facility built you need between 30 and forty thousand tons of glass a year Mm. to make that to get a glass facility built to make that engineered glass sand now he thinks that the um illawarra and wollongong councils is around eight thousand tons a year of glass mm -hmm. produced so again it's just that vol there's kind of those volumes mm. that are required so i think it's um, to, to get a new facility built, it would be to get a network of councils within mm. an area involved so that you had those volumes to build a new facility. And then I think certainly IQ Renew is always open to working with new councils. Um, Excellent. And, you know, really excited about the opportunity to be able to recover more resources. Mm. So. Definitely, definitely. No, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, and another question that I had was around the amount of power um, for the process. So, you know, there's obviously there's there's the plastic and there's the glass um, up to you, which one you want to talk in more yeah. detail. But yeah, really. Um, so how much power does a process consume compared to um, alternative options, um, particularly around plastic, I suppose? Yeah, so, um, so that's an interesting one for plastic I can talk to. Um, mm -hmm. So we did some modelling where we looked at chemical recycling using the CAT HTR for plastic versus, um, so obviously there's landfill, which we know we don't want to do that. I think burying the problem is never the preferred option. Mm -hmm. If you look at the waste hierarchy, landfill right down the bottom. Above landfill, you've got incineration. So one step above burying it is burning it for energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously much preferable to that is recycling, reusing, reducing. So in terms of energy recovery, if we compare taking a ton of plastic and burning it for energy versus taking that same ton of plastic and chemically recycling it to make oil, to make new products, what we have is that, um, so looking at same um, amount of plastic, so type of plastic, is you produce twice as much value. So when you look at the value of the energy created for burning the plastic versus the value, the potential value of those fuels and chemicals that you produce from the plastic using mm. the CAT HTR, you get twice as much value. But then significantly in terms of power use and energy efficiency, it actually requires half the energy to do that. Mm. So CAT HTR is a very efficient process. Um, it uses water at high pressure and high temperature to break down the plastic on a chemical level. And that what happens is that 85% of the plastic is produced produces oil. 15% is gas, which is a high um, energy gas, which can be used and recycled back into the process that fires that supercritical water boiler to heat the water. So it's a very efficient circular mm. process and nothing's wasted. So the gas that's created that uh, from the plastic that doesn't produce the oil is used back as energy for the process. So mm. essentially versus incineration, double the value, half the energy mm. for plastic. Incredible. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm getting more excited right. the, more, the more that you talk about it. <laughs> That's good. That's what we want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know people exactly. often say like this. This sounds too good to be true. It's it's not too good to be true. It's just you know to get any um, emerging technology or new technology requires investment. So mm. and it also requires policy, which embraces innovation. So getting mm. anything built which is a first of kind technology, there's always that challenge of you know firstly getting getting the investment, but then also. Um, ensuring that policy is there that doesn't inhibit 
these innovative technologies coming to market. Mm. So um, look, we we still uh, Lysella. So I also work for Lysella. Mm -hmm. um, so I work with Lysella and IQ Renew. So Lysella being the technology developers. We've been doing this now for twelve years. So mm. um, you know, it's certainly not something that's been created overnight. And we're working with partners around the world. So IQ Renew is our Australian partner. Mm -hmm. um, the first commercial plant's likely to be built in the UK next year. Mm -hmm. So our pilot plant is, um, so our commercial demonstration plant, which we use for doing all of our trials and all of our um, engineering support for our partners around the world is on the central coast in mm -hmm. Summersby. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of how we came to partner with IQ Renew because IQ Renew is also based in Summersby. Right. So the material recovery facility, which takes the recycling, is about a two minute drive down the road from our um, dem commercial demonstration plant. So it would seem to be, a, it was a very logical partnership. Mm. So for our trials, we recently did um, the largest um, chemical recycling trial on soft plastics at our plant. All mm. of that material came from the IQ Renew material recovery facility just up the road. Mm. So it's a, it was a very logical partnership. So I think, you know, ge ge geographically that made sense, but mm. we're in that stage now where we're certainly looking to expand and looking at other areas in New South Wales, other areas in Australia that we can establish a local chemical recycling industry. Mm. So yeah, certainly open to discussions with councils and companies and other areas. Fantastic. And in terms of the ideal location, so obviously you need to have a level of supply um, to make that process work, but are there any key character characteristics for the ideal site location um, yeah, to actually yeah, build certainly. a commercial plant? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, each, each state has different um, policies around emerging technologies. New South Wales, I would say, particularly the EPA is one of the most stringent which can make mm -hmm. things difficult. Uh, Victoria uh, embraces new technologies maybe a little more in terms of the policy perspective. That's purely just a policy. From a purely practical or operational standpoint. Obviously you want to be um, somewhere where you do have supply. So for a commercial plant, so minimum volume for a commercial KHDR plant is around 20,000 tonnes of plastic a year, 20,000 tonnes of end of life plastic. Uh, however, I think once once we roll out CAT HTR around Australia, there'll be a mix of plants based in metro and regional centres. So for regional areas, we'll be looking at maybe slightly smaller plants, but initially those plants, we need 20,000 tonne volume. So mm. it's all about the volume with, with a lot of these things. And again, with the glass um, crush um, and wash facilities, you need around 30,000 tonnes of glass a year. So it's just the, the scale of the feedstock. So we call mm feedstock, the stuff that goes in, but then also having um, partners as well. So it's, it's handy, say, for example, with the CAT HTR, if we have a local um, chemical manufacturer close by, so we need to have the supply, but then mm -hmm. also the offtake partners to buy the product at the end. Mm, definitely. So, yeah. Excellent. No, that, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, I suppose you've touched on this one already a little bit, but um, it was around, um, you know, does your company have any funding for a potential trial or study plant to be commissioned in an area such as the Illawarra or Shellhaven? Um, just because, you know, the points that you're touching on, you know, we've um, basically everything that you've ticked off there, we feel our, our region certainly ticks the box. Um, how, how do, what, how do you, um, I suppose, manage the funding part of these things? Yeah, well, I mean, we're always interested in speaking to new investment partners. So we certainly be interested to speaking with companies in the Illawarra who are interested in investing in these technologies mm -hmm. and these recycling technologies, whether it be a, the glass um, recovery plant or the um, CAT HDR chemical recycling plant for plastic. Mm -hmm. So we're always open to those discussions. And certainly, um, you know, we have, uh, I'm sure it's some point we have spoken with companies in the Illawarra area. Mm. I think you know, being in it, being a you know a heavy a heavy manufacturing and industrial hub, mm. I think it is very logical to have those discussions. Again, it's always just around. Um, so we currently don't have any plans to build something in that area, but mm -hmm. we're certainly always open to those discussions. And yeah, funding, um, feedstock, and offtake will be the three key areas mm. to consider with Fantastic. any new facility.
Excellent. Great. Um, well, we'll certainly pop your details at the end of the yes, video so for do. people to reach out because, <laughs> um, yeah, it would be wonderful to have something like yes, this in our region. Agree. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and are the plants designed in Australia? I know that you said you've got international yes. offices, but is the plant itself designed in Australia? Yes. So the technology is Australian technology. So the IP was created in Australia. Um, our pilot plant, which is the largest um, technology facility of its kind in the world, is as I say, on the Central Coast, mm -hmm. New South Wales. Um, a lot of the materials for the facility are, have been specifically designed to be off the shelf. So a lot of, so I think the like things like the, you know, the actual um, fabrication is done in-house at mm. um, the Central Coast, but a lot of the components for the plant would be off the shelf components. Um, the detailed engineering work for the first plant is being done in the UK. Mm -hmm. So because that first plant is in the UK, However, yeah, a lot of the um, components, some of the components would be sourced locally and some would be sourced overseas. So mm. some components of a commercial plastic plant are only available overseas. It's about, you know, trying to find, for example, the extruder that sits at the front end, which pushes and heats the plastic to get it moving into the process. I think the largest one that's available globally is in Europe. So, mm. you know, it really depends on which part of the plant we're talking about, but the mm. IP sits within Australia because it was invented in Australia. Some of the parts would be sourced locally, some of the parts overseas. But certainly a lot of um, local jobs are created through both the building and the running of any new facilities. So yeah, certainly definitely. we'd be looking to draw on local expertise and local skills in terms of the engineering, chemical engineering, process engineering, um, the scientists, the chemists, um, and then the people with refinery experience as well. There's a huge amount of skill in Australia that we can utilize. So, you know, yeah. at our pilot plant in New South Wales, we've got electricians, um, engineers, scientists, uh, you know, a, a whole range of skills, local skills. Fantastic. And so, um, so basically what you're saying there that if, um, that, you know, if we were um, lucky enough to make everything yes. aligned and, and yes. to, to have a, um, a plant in our region, then, you know, we, we would be able to use the capability and the Absolutely. expertise in our region. Yeah, Absolutely, for, for yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and if any of the um, our wonderful members watching are interested and feel like they can supply um, expertise or components, um, whether it's now or into the future, how would they go about that? Uh, yep, so more information can be found on Lysella and IQ Renew on our website. So Lysella, it's lysella.com, uh, IQ Renew, IQ Renew.com. Um, and I will make my details available um, in terms of email address so people could reach out probably at this stage with COVID and people working from <laughs> home. Email is usually the best option. So they can email through to info at IQ or mm -hmm. info at lysella.com. Um, and we'll take it from there. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, we, we raced um, through all of those questions. That's actually the, the end of my list. Did Sorry, you yes, I do like to talk. <laughs> no, that was good. I, like, that was I the think point I'm, I'm answering her future questions. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's, it's, um, it's excellent. I think it was such a great, um, yeah, you covered everything that I wanted to go okay, through. Good. But was there anything else that you wanted to add before we finish up? No, just to say thank you for your interest in the company and the technology. And I always really enjoy speaking um, with uh, speaking with people about it and sharing our passion for recycling and Australian technology and innovation. So, yeah, please reach out, uh, go to our website. We've got um, a good short video, both on the Lysella and IQ Renew website, which gives a short overview. I think it's about four minutes of mm, the technology. That's a great uh, so video. So I'd encourage, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd encourage mm. people to watch the video. So I probably haven't given as concise an explanation on the technology as you'll get from the video. Um, and if you have any questions, yeah, please reach out and get in contact with us. Thank you so much, Andrew. Look, I, I really you. appreciate how much knowledge and passion you have. It's so exciting to be able to hear that from you. Um, really appreciate your time. Appreciate no you. Problem. So thank you so much for your Thanks. time this morning. Thanks, Bianca. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye.